Hello, I'm Ava Jarvis and welcome to Solo Boarding. On this show I review board games with official and fan-made solo rules, both professional and print and play. Now, I game alone for a variety of reasons these days. I am less able to cope with certain social situations during certain times of the year and sometimes other times of the year. I live on an island where there aren't that many gamers and I'm socially isolated economically as well since it costs me quite a bit of money to actually go into Seattle in a, on a regular basis and game there. So these days I do most of my gaming solitaire, but it's not as bad as you might think. Solo gaming has for me been a savior of sorts. There were some dark times in my past when I wouldn't see tomorrow unless there was a game to play. I could immerse myself deeply into some theme. I could concentrate all my will and resources away from the dark thoughts into creating an engine to generate resources that would give me these actions that would build on to give me these actions and these other resources and so on and so forth. Just enjoyable gaming mechanisms and theme, things that you find in a game apart from social interaction, the things that keep a game from being merely a social activity. And the interactiveness of this method of escape was extremely appealing, very absorbing, which was what I need during that time. The tactile nature of board games satisfied me a lot more than video games did, so that was where I turned to. There are a number of advantages to solo gaming, however, that you may find interesting even if you aren't isolated in some manner. The main advantage of solo gaming Consider the game that you just can't get to the table anymore. Maybe the people who are interested in it have moved away. Maybe your family just isn't interested in Caverna. Maybe there's a game, perhaps, that you want to enjoy, but you just, you just aren't feeling it, like Ticket to Ride. Now, solo rules are a wonderful way to bring those games back to the table. They don't have to gather dust in your shelves. They don't have to be traded away. They can bring you enjoyment. Your investment can still pay off. There are solo rules for Ticket to Ride that are extremely challenging, but people who love a challenge will probably find extreme enjoyment in this new puzzly way to play Ticket to Ride. And the best part is there's no wrong way to play it. Um, you can play it hard, and solo mode, or you can play it in another mode with friends, and you can like both of them, or you can like one or the other. There are solo rules for Lords of Waterdeep. There are solo rules for Mage Wars, for Battle Lore Second Edition. There are solo rules that are better than the natural solo rules for Agricola, and I believe someone's going to probably work on better solo rules for Caverna. Solo rules that bring back some form of interaction to interactivity with an AI of some sort, whether it's a simple AI or something more complex. Even Seven Wonders has at least three AIs available on Board Game Geek for you to try out and play. In addition, when you game by yourself, you aren't held back by other people. Not to say that other people are bad to have around. In fact, social gaming is one of the most entertaining and fascinating and enjoyable experiences that I've ever had. But consider this. Suppose that there is a game that is susceptible for you for analysis paralysis. Now, other people may not enjoy waiting for their turn while you are puzzling out the best way to do something. Solo gaming, there's no other people to worry about. You can, you can explore all the strategies you want. And after you explore those strategies, you can bring them back to the table confident that you now know what you are doing. Another factor is theme immersion. What if you are by yourself? You can lose yourself in that theme very easily. And it is 
an enjoyable experience. There is a whole load of difference between being constantly reminded that you are only playing a game versus just being by yourself and being able to soar through the skies on your fighter, being able to save and untaint the land, fighting monsters, and beyond that, there are other experiences that you can have as well. But just because you game alone doesn't mean you are alone. There's a guild on Board Game Geek called the One Player Guild. It's filled with very friendly people. You might expect that a bunch of solo gamers would be antisocial. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Every single month there's this huge geek list, 30 pages at least towards the end of the month, where people post about games they've been playing. They post their experiences, they post session reports, they post what they've been finding good about a game, what they've been finding bad about a game, and there's a lot of commentary back and forth, commenting on um, whether a certain game is better than another, what strategies to use, websites to visit to learn how to better build for LOTR, TCG, and this camaraderie is just fascinating to me because it's yet another way that gaming brings us closer together socially, even when we're not all around the same table. So join me on this journey through the gaming solo sphere.